All right, everyone, I think we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, so first of all, my name is Drew Lawrence. I'm the operations manager for military veteran journalism. And uh, I just want to say how thankful I am to, to have all of you today. Um, today, we're doing a webinar with Temple University, specifically the, uh, the Klein College of Media and Communications. And we have a, a whole host of panelists that I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from. And I, I just want to say one thing about this event um, and, and how excited I've been about it. Um, this is really one of the first times we've uh, ventured into the, the academic sense. We've had a lot of experiential, you know, on the ground uh, reporters talking about that type of thing, but it's always great and important uh, to take, you know, a, a pulse or temperature of what's going on in the academic world. And of course, we're going to get to hear from some, some great reporters too, um, but it's, it's just really awesome having you. So with that said, um, when, when panelists come on, or excuse me, when attendees come in, uh, just go ahead and ask your questions in the q and I'll kind of regulate them. And when we hit a, a lull, I'll go ahead and ask our, our panelists. And at the end of each, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Um, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to David. Uh, David, if you can go ahead and just introduce yourself and uh, give a, a brief background, a little bit about the college, um, your experience as a journalist and everything in between. Thank you, uh, and thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity. Um, I hope this is uh, useful for your members, and uh, certainly if there are opportunities in the future to uh, continue the dialogue, we would all be uh, happy to do that. So I'm David Mindich. I'm the chair of the journalism department here at Temple University. Um, I got my start at CNN, and I'll talk about that um, in a few minutes. Um, and uh, do you want me to introduce um, my my colleagues, or, or are you going to do that throughout the um, the the session? Uh, well, you can go ahead and introduce your colleagues. Okay. So um, so with me uh, today is Luann Khan, um, and Luann Khan is an eight time Emmy award winning journalist with NBC Ten News and is now the Director of Career Services at the Klein College of Media and Communication at Temple here in Philadelphia. Um, we also have um, uh, Logan Molyneux, who's an Associate um, Professor of Journalism. Uh, Logan uh, got his start at uh, various uh, publications, including the Daily Herald in Provo, Utah, as a copy editor, um, uh, as a reporter, and then a copy editor for the Austin American Statesman. Uh, and KUT Radio. His research is in uh, many things, but including the journalist's use of social media uh, and how social media impacts journalists and vice versa. Um, and uh, we have um, Frank Bowman, who's the director of enrollment, um, and Christy Fiorosi, um, who's the um, assistant director of military and veteran affairs here at uh, Temple. So we've got a, an all-star group here, and I'm very thankful to have them as my colleagues and here today uh, as well. Um, so uh, I got my start at CNN back in the 1980s um, as a young guy. And uh, when I first arrived at CNN, um, I was told uh, right away when I, when I began uh, to be a, an assignment editor, an evening assignment editor, I was told by a senior editor, um, a fire in a welfare hotel is not the same thing as a fire in the Waldorf hotel. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, as a young guy, I had no idea that, that you know, different lives mattered in different ways. Um, and uh, it was a murder of a uh, woman in New York City, a uh, young woman named Jennifer Levin. Um, and she was killed and put on the front page of the New York Times every day for a week. Um, and at that time, there were five murders a day in New York City. And I was really surprised as a young person, like why are we picking one person to cover and not others? Um, and it kind of led me to the a career of asking the question both, as a journalist, like, um, and part of that uh, discussion about like which lives matter 
has to do with um, the journalists who are doing the reporting, right? And the assumptions that journalists make. Um, and so, for example, in the case of Jennifer Levin, in the case of the welfare hotel, there were some class and race aspects to like certain journalists could identify more with Jennifer Levin than with the other four murders a day that were happening. Um, and uh, here at Temple, we think a lot about um, how we cover the city of Philadelphia. Um, we go into neighborhoods that don't get a lot of coverage, like uh, a poorer neighborhood called Kensington, another neighborhood called Germantown. And we do a lot of listening. Uh, we don't just dive into a community. We also listen to what communities members have to say and let, and let the community members set the agenda as well. And I think, you know, for um, the members on this call, um, uh, the audience, the participants, that's where you come in. Those of you who are trying to break into journalism, who are veterans, um, we need you. We need you because when we talk about the mirror that is journalism, um, the mirror shines better and reflects better certain groups than others. Uh, and we know, and you probably know this better than we do, um, that veterans, uh, that military people are not always um, um, well reflected, accurately reflected in the mirror. Sometimes the mirror for many groups uh, reflects a funhouse mirror where certain members are distorted, certain experiences are distorted. And so uh, I don't want to only talk about, um, you know, template journalism, and I'm happy to do that for a long time. But I also want to talk about, you know, where you as someone who's uh, uh, maybe new to journalism, or maybe trying to break into journalism might fit in. And I would encourage you to use your experience um, as a person from the military um, uh, as a real asset. Um, it's not like you'd be, uh, those of you who are trying to break into journalism are breaking in without experience. You have valuable experience that not everyone in the newsroom, in fact, that most people in the newsroom do not have. Um, and we think we can think of a lot of great uh, articles about the military um, uh, that you would probably be able to weigh in on or maybe even tell better. There was a Pulitzer Prize winning story um, uh, about Walter Reed uh, Medical Hospital um, in 2007 um, by the Washington Post that really revealed the conditions were just terrible um, in hospitals. Um, there was a 2019 investigation um, by Reuters um, of landlords um, on military bases. Uh, just today, um, the, I was reading, there was a, an article in the, um, the Wall Street Journal um, about a, um, about, uh, a Malaysian um, uh, fixer um, who was making a lot of money off of uh, the, the U.S. Navy um, and uh, U.S. Naval officers, uh, including very senior people, it's alleged, were really um, uh, doing a lot of corrupt and questionable uh, duties. So, um, you know, there are a lot of things. Um, the military um, uh, is a huge part of the budget. Um, there, there are hundreds of thousands of people uh, who serve. Uh, there are millions of people who have served. Um, and these are stories that can be told. And finally, I'll just say that I, I, I heard a great um, uh, graduation speech by a guy named Robert Krolich, who was the head of Radiolab um, before he retired last year. And he said that one of the hallmarks of this era that we're living in um, is that we can, if you're interested in journalism, you can just do it. Um, you, uh, you might not make a lot of money in the beginning, but um, we know of a lot of examples of people who've broken into journalism by just starting their own blogs, starting to um, write about a topic. Um, uh, Brian Stelzer, who worked for the New York Times, started off as a blogger, is now at CNN. Um, and people bring different experiences, whether they're a doctor or a lawyer or uh, a military veteran. Um, you know, these experiences are key because if we want to tell uh, a true picture, when we want to uh, provide a true picture of the world um, and that we want this mirror to be accurate and to include all people, 
that um, that your function in that media universe is completely essential. So I'll I'll stop there and uh, throw it back to you, Drew. Yeah, of course. No, I, I appreciate you saying that. And I I think the uh, representation portion that you brought up um, first and foremost is is huge um, because what that shows to the veteran community is it's not you know, it's not resulting in, in tokenism or, or anything like that. There's a, there's a uh, tangible um, benefit to having different, different voices in the newsroom. And I wanted to ask, you know, cause we've, like I had said, we had talked about how that affects the newsroom, but what about, you know, in the academic sense? So like in, in Klein College, right? How does that uh, representation help your student body and help others learn? Um, you know, pre getting into the into the experiential um, parts of journalism. You know, it, it's so easy for a student to raise uh, raise their hand and say, uh, "This is what I think about the military." You know, and <laughs> um, it's so good when you have a veteran in the classroom as a student uh, to say, "Well, actually, that's." that's not how it happens at all, you know, or, you know, that's not what we do. Um, and, uh, you know, you can say that about any, you know, any group, um, you know, if you say all blank people are this, and uh, you can say that in a prejudiced way until you, um, until you actually meet one <laughs> a person and a fill in the blank, you know, background, right? So, um, uh, I, you know, I, I, we're one of the most diverse colleges uh, uh, and universities in the country, and I'm very proud of that. Um, certainly, um, uh, d diversity must include um, uh, veterans, um, and you know, must include people with with tangible military experience. I, um, you know, it's so easy to go to war if you don't know anyone who's who's affected, right? Uh, it's easy to send other people's sons and daughters into war, um, uh, but uh, you need, I mean, the stakes are really high, right? And the stakes are really high, particularly in a volunteer army, right? A volunteer military. Um, and so uh, the stakes are really high because uh, a lot of people don't have an immediate connection. Um, we saw um, in the 60s, for example, um, when there were protests in the street, because uh, every you know young man at, at some point was um, was potentially going to go to Vietnam, right? Um, and it touched uh, everybody. Um, when you have an all volunteer force, um, you um, uh, you risk not making these connections and not really understanding. Um, what people who have the most at stake are ex experiencing. So it's essential that in every classroom, uh, to the extent that we can, we can make that happen, that, um, that there are veterans and people who have served um, uh, in various capacities in each class. Of course, and, you know, I, again, I appreciate you bringing that up too. And one of the things that, that I always like to ask too is, is advice. And I, um, that you would give to the veteran community. With, with that being said, because, um, you know, there's, we talked a little bit about tokenism and representation. Um, there's a lot of commonalities that say that, um, you know, higher companies or other people would say, hey, we need to hire veterans because of, you know, there's a, they're hardworking and blah, blah, blah. But what's, what's some, you know, outside of that, what's some hard, hard facts advice that you would give the veteran community that's trying to transition into journalism? Um, some of the things that they needed to do, um, not, you know, outside of leveraging their, their experience. Yeah, I think leveraging the experience is actually the number one thing that, that it, don't treat it as a, um, uh, I mean, certainly if you're a generically a, a business person, you should hire veterans because veterans have served an important part of, uh, of, uh, you know, of society and we owe veterans a great debt. Um, but um, but in terms of journalism, there's a direct, you know, value added in any newsroom to have uh, veterans understand uh, that world. And there are, you know, millions of people in the VA system, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, um, uh, 
veteran hospitals. Um, there are people, um, you know, tens of thousands of people who are living uh, on or near military bases. Um, uh, there are contractors, there are um, all kinds of uh, people who are connected to the military establishment um, who, uh, who needed a voice, who need an explanation. Um, I, I remember looking through the AP style book um, uh, and there are, you know, sections of descriptions about exactly, you know, what a battalion is, you know, what, you know, and these are things that, that, that those of us who haven't served need to learn, right? Um, and these are things that, um, uh, that veterans know, you know, and just the experience of, 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 of being in a conflict and, and being um, even apart from a conflict, being on a base, um, that's that's apart from um, uh, active conflict. It's still uh, these are experiences that 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 um, newsrooms are poor uh, if they don't have uh, that experience. Oh, thank you, David. And before I turn it over to uh, Luann, is there anything else that you you wanted to add for closing comments? No, no, thanks. But this this is um, I'm, I'm excited to. Uh, to hear your questions and, and the questions of your group. Yeah, of course. Thank you, David. Luann, I'm going to just turn it over to you. I appreciate, again, I appreciate you being here, uh, taking time at your busy schedule. Um, I, if you just want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, I know yeah, that no, I, uh, again, um, I spent 40 years as a TV news reporter, uh, many of those years as an investigative reporter. But I was thinking today, and I was thinking as, as uh, David was talking, that there's some commonalities between, because I'm often sitting in the seat talking to someone who says, I'm thinking about going into journalism, or should I do this, or should I do that, and helping them sort that out. And I was thinking that there's some common things between the military and journalism. It's a calling. It's not like any other job. Um, people who go into the military, it's a calling, right? And journalism is much the same. It's, it's not nine to five. Um, it's long hours. Um, you work very hard. You may not get home for Thanksgiving, um, but you believe in it. There's a, a mission, right? And the mission for journalists is truth. And um, I, I feel like those who are veterans could really can really relate to this. And that's why veterans may be very good journalists. We are often the ones running toward things, you know, the, the fire, the murder, the disaster, the storm, 9-11, Sandy Hook, two stories I covered. You know, we're going to cover those things. Um, and it takes a great deal of discipline. Journalism takes a great deal of discipline, but also the ability to pivot and move quickly to a new assignment as circumstances change. So when I think about the qualities that somebody needs to be in the military, I think some of those qualities are the very ones we need in journalists too. You know, I, I will share with you, um, <laughs> yesterday I talked to one of our alum, who's a young reporter at a small TV station. And she said, I'm really jealous of my friends who get to go to lunch and happy hour and, and are going to be off for Christmas. And I said, yeah, but they don't get to do what you do to witness history, to see things nobody else gets to see, to be able to ask questions um, of, of people who are in power, to question authority. Why? How? How did this happen? You know, that is the privilege of being a journalist. And, and there's a certain amount, I think, of the ability to be somewhat fearless, courageous, you know, going after it, being competitive, you know, depending on what kind of journalist you are, but you want to win, you want to beat your competitor. So again, I think there are a lot of qualities that probably our veterans share um, with journalists, um, I think, but of course, the other thing, the skills that you need, um, you need to be able to be a good storyteller 
And I know some of, um, of our veteran um, who come in as students have gotten experience in the military uh, on different platforms. But what happens when you come back to school, of course, and of course our employers, yes, you can create everything right here, right? It's all right here. But our employers do want a college degree. Uh, most of our employers, when I talk to them, they're looking for a college degree. They're also looking for that experience. And so once you come back to school, uh, all those doors open up to you again to, to learn to tell a story on all different kinds of platforms. You know, today we train, and maybe um, Logan can talk more about that. Um, we, we're training you as a multimedia journalist. You know, it's, it's content creation, it's social media, it's um, the web, it's broadcast, it's all of that. Um, and so when you come, let's say to a, a college like Temple and, and Klein College, where you get experience on all the campus media and then all the employers, in fact, I'm just planning a uh, career fair right now. I don't know if you can see this. These are all the employers coming to our career fair. Love that. So these are just some of the 32 employers, and this is our small fair. This isn't even our big fair. So what happens, you come to our college and we connect you with all these people mm -hmm. because they love our students um, and they know they're well-trained here. So it's a different kind of training. It's a different kind of discipline. But I really do think veterans make great journalists because they have some basic qualities that are needed in this field and a stick to itiveness. I mean, it's not easy to go into this. Um, it takes guts and it takes courage. And sometimes it is, um, there's some sacrifice too. It's a belief in something bigger than ourselves. So I think um, I love to see when veterans come in and I'd love to see more journalists who are veterans. Luann, that's, that's really well said. And I just want to follow up on a, on a question because you talked um, about some of the commonalities between journalists and, and veterans. Um, on the veteran side, a lot of that comes, sometimes that comes with stereotyping. Um, David had mentioned, you know, we, we get a reflection of some society, but if you don't have members representing that reflection, it becomes distorted. Mm -hmm. um, one of the kind of like the lesser known stereotypes that I have heard, at least going to, to newsrooms or been asked about myself, um, is um, initiative, taking an initiative. A lot of people have this sense that um, veterans or, or soldiers coming out, they need to wait to be told to do something. They're used to taking orders. Um, and I, I, you know, obviously that's, that's not the case. A lot of people take the initiative, you have to. Um, but I wanted to ask you instances where that was applicable in your career, where let's say you couldn't get a hold of an editor, you had to make a decision on the spot or you were going to lose the story. Um, oh, yeah. Obviously you don't, you know, win eight Emmys waiting for people to tell you what to do in your job. So I wanted to, to kind of pick your brain about that and say, hey, we're going to ask you, hey, what, uh, what was an instance where you had to just you know, I can't get a hold of my editor, um, but I need to make a decision. I mean, journalists in the field are making decisions all day long. Like you do get your marching, you know, you might get your marching orders in the morning, right? I'll call it marching orders, right? You know, here's your story. But after that, you're out in the field and you got to decide what happens next. Where are you going to go? And there are, you know, this doesn't work. Okay, let me go in this direction. Um, and I think veterans are very, who've served, are very much prepared to go out there. And again, here's the general, here's, here's the mission, here's what we've got to accomplish, here are the deadlines you've got to meet. But in between all those deadlines, it's up to you, baby. You got to figure that out. And I, and I think um, veterans absolutely have experience like that. They've got to deliver, right? You got to deliver. Things, certain things are expected. These things have to happen. You're going to have to make decisions out there when, you know, um, I, I'm sure lots of different things that are not expected happen out in the field out there. 
you got to make the call and, and same in this business. Do you, do you have an example of, of your reporting where you kind of had to make the make oh, the every single every single day nothing goes as planned um oh my gosh you know i went to i did cover 9 11 i don't know that comes to mind i guess because and um you know when the planes went into the towers i was sent up to new york to ground zero and um, my live crew was next to near the towers. And I had to run out and go get an interview. And then I was coming back to go live. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't get, they wouldn't let me back in to get to my crew. So I was stuck uh, and I had to find another way. I, I think I, somehow got a tape into someone else's hands to get it across the lines to my truck. And then I called it in. But I, I mean, I could probably tell you a million stories I thought about it because every single time you're sent out, things happen that you don't expect. Um, and you've, you've got to make a different decision. You go into, you're covering a hurricane and you lose everything you've got to figure out how you're going to get that story filed anywhere anyway somehow um and you work on teams you know you work with an editor you work with a photographer um this is your this is your crew right and just as in the military i'm sure when you depend on your people around you to keep you safe get you where you need to be it's it's very much a team sport too in journalism, at least in TV news, which is my experience. Absolutely. Um, and, and to go back a little bit to what we we're talking about earlier is, you know, being, again, the commonalities, but having these experiences, such a special opportunity. You talked about one of your students who was almost jealous of others who, who got to, you know, go to Christmas and happy hours and those types of things. Um, one of the big conversations that's come out, especially in light of the pandemic, is uh, you know the concept of of newsroom burnout, um, where you know people are working long hours, especially with the pandemic, we're stuck inside. There's not a lot of uh, ability to go and do those things that would normally create a, a healthy work life balance. And I just kind of wanted to to ask you a little bit about that topic. Um, you know, what are some of the important things to consider to make sure that you are, I don't want to say pacing yourself, but not burning yourself out. I think we're very concerned about this topic right now more than ever. And I am hearing from a lot of our young journalists out in the field, to be honest, that they are struggling. And it's not because one, it's not easy to break into the business just to begin with. It's, it's, it can be grueling. Um, and on top of that, now we're dealing with the pandemic, which is different. Um, dealing with the, the um, restrictions and, and trying to get interviews and do your job while trying to keep safe. But we're also, to be frank, they're dealing, we're dealing with a society and half of, of our society now thinks you're fake news. And that's something to deal with too because at least in the past, you're underpaid, you're working hard, but the community said, come on in, interview me, let me, yeah. And now half of people are like, get away from me, you're fake news. That really um, does something, you know, to the mental health of journalists who are just trying to do their job. So to be quite honest, um, we're trying to figure out that out now. We're talking to young journalists right now about how to keep healthy, how to make sure you get enough sleep, how to make sure you feed yourself well, how to make sure you don't just overtire yourself so that you, um, you can keep yourself physically and mentally strong to do this. Because it does, it is a, um, it takes, it takes that. And I, I wish I could tell you what, the answer is right now, we're talking about it. Mm. This is a real issue. We're talking about it and we're trying to talk to our young journalists so that they can vent and, and um, feel like they're not alone. Mm. 
-hmm. And um, yeah, that's a real thing. Yeah. What, and if you don't mind me asking, you know, when you were, you were up and coming and you were facing those deadlines and, and kind of the grind, as you were talking about, what were some of the things that you did to ensure that you had a good, you know, ask, good outlook on everything or if, if anything? I'm, no, I'm just going <laughs> to, I can't tell you that I had a lot of balance. I'll be really honest with you. I lived and breathed work. I loved it. Yeah. And I will tell you, I would do it all again. Mm -hmm. I would do it absolutely all again. Uh, you know, as much as I feel like it was hard, it was brutal. The first years were difficult to get used to what you were doing. When you begin, you make a lot of mistakes. You have to wake up in the morning and make more mistakes. Um, and it takes a long time to really become a professional, to be good at what you do. I am not the best, you know, to say balance. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I mean, David or Logan, maybe you can tell me, did you, you know, there were just times in my career I did not have balance, but I loved, loved, loved what I did. And it's one of those things. Again, it's calling. If you don't love it, you might need to go do something else. That's I mean, that's probably not what you were looking for there. It's kind of like when people say, hey, I'm going to Hollywood and I'm going to become an actor. I'm like, is there anything else you'd rather do? Because maybe you should go do that. This is a calling. This is unique. And there will not, there will be times there is not a lot of balance, but you love and be thrilled and excited and satisfied with what you are doing and accomplishing. And yeah. Um, I don't know, Logan, I don't know, maybe Logan can help with this. <laughs> yeah, Logan, if you want to jump in, you can answer that question too. I don't know that I can help a ton. It's a, it's a reckoning that I think a lot of jobs across the country are having with, um, you know, that's, that's why we see so many quits across healthcare and uh, just all kinds of other types of jobs too. But um, something that has really helped me is to try to establish boundaries around my work uh, for me to decide what exactly I'm willing to give um, so that I can preserve the things that I value at, at home and in the other aspects of my life. Um, and then say, okay, when, when I've reached those boundaries, I'm not going to cross them. Um, journalism can be a little bit uh, difficult in that area because news is entirely unpredictable, right? And so you, you might say, oh, I have a thing that I need to be to tonight, but then the world blows up and you know all of a sudden they need somebody to, to cover it. That happened a couple of times to me in my career. Um, but I, I think there's still ways that you can uh, draw meaningful boundaries around your work and then find uh, ways to keep yourself healthy. Sure, and Logan, speaking of work, if you could go ahead and just maybe introduce yourself um, and, and what you do at, at the Klein College, a little bit about your history as well. And I, I do wanna say, obviously I've been super excited to hear from all of you, but Logan, I. Definitely on the um, academic sense, I think um, getting a great pulse of, you know, what, what students are learning. Um, you know, Luann, you talked about like teaching different things, like how we're coping with the mental health aspects of being a journalist. Um, so I'm, I'm very interested to hear, hear from you as well, Logan. Great, sure. So I got a job um, as a journalist right out of college. Uh, I worked at a small daily newspaper for a while and really enjoyed it. I was having a good time. I was promoted to the role of editor very soon, which was something that I aspired to. And then I realized that it also involved supervision of other reporters and that being somebody's boss was you know, really distasteful to me. I, I would get in trouble for things that they did wrong, right? <laughs> and that was difficult for me to deal with. Uh, so I decided to make a change and um, now I'm a professor, uh, but I'm a special kind of professor that also does a bunch of research. And so I study what journalists do with their time and especially what they do on social media. So that's really interesting. But I think the reason that I'm here in this call is that I direct a master of journalism program for uh, folks who are interested in, you know, who've already received a bachelor's degree. It could be in journalism or it could be in something else. who are interested in coming back to school um, for additional training or to make a career switch into journalism. The degree that we offer is one year and that's appealing to a lot of people for um, the fact that it can be over quickly, 
Uh, I should also say that it has some drawbacks with it because part of the thing that you do during your college career is to build up your portfolio and begin job seeking and um, and make that transition. And you know, uh, especially in you know during a pandemic, it can be hard to do all of those things within a, the frame of a single year. You know, so you have to consider whether that one year time frame is right for you or not. Um, we build our program around the things that Philadelphia offers. So we try to send people out into the city, ask them to report on communities, events, issues, especially social issues that are facing our city. Uh, Philadelphia is no stranger to many of the big urban issues that are um, facing cities all across the country. Um, we have opportunities to report on the people and things that are, um, that are happening here that are undercovered by a lot of the other larger media you know, sometimes, you know, we're able to pick up on things that are flying under the radar. But we had, uh, the, the core of our master's program is um, a six credit course called the Urban Reporting Lab, and we try to make a, um, a newsroom-like experience. The instructor acts as an editor and helps you develop your stories in whatever medium that you're interested in. We've had folks work on podcasts and uh, TV news packages, as well as you know traditional web stories and, uh, and things like that, that that you might be familiar with. Logan, I, I just want to hop in and ask a quick question, just because it it definitely is goes to the why for for masters in journalism. Um, you know, I always see the the discourse about. You know, there's, there's, it's almost 50 50 about people who are like, hey, you know, go to, go to journalism school, don't go to journalism school, get a master's in journalism, bachelor's, don't even do it at all, go do something else and then get into journalism. Um, you know, what, what makes your program particularly useful for, for journalism? Why, you know, why should journalists go to, to Klein College and, and take your program? All right. So there's a few different kinds of folks who come. To our program. Some of them have had journalism training at another university and they want something um, that's maybe a little bit more rigorous or that has a little bit more connections, you know, with our alumni base or with some of the internship programs like um, what Luan helps us run. Um, and, and there's also people who, for whatever reason, change their minds about what they wanted to do and they're like, oh, I need to wait back into journalism. You know, so I'm not going to start over at the beginning again and go get another undergraduate degree. I'm going to go get a master's degree, uh, and then they they come to us. You no, know, and it, and I appreciate you saying that because, you know, that that type of opportunity, the second bucket, the ladder that you talked about, is probably what's most applicable to to veterans. Um, you know, a lot of them while they're in or prior to joining. Um, may have undergrad or some college credits, community college, and they go and they do the Army, Navy, military service uh, thing and get a different experience. But, you know, they find out that they want to go into journalism. They already have their bachelor's. You know, where's, where's the next place to learn? Um, so that's, it really is a, a perfect opportunity, the master's degree. And especially the, I, I appreciate you mentioned the, the one-year program too, um, because, you know, a lot of, um, veterans who are getting out may feel, I, I felt this too, uh, just having gotten out that I was behind the curve um, for a lot of people getting into journalism or, and this goes for any job too, um, especially when you're starting a new one. So having that condensed timeline to say, hey, I got my master's, I know how to quote unquote do journalism now, and I'm ready to, uh, to do it on an, uh, an experiential level is, is perfect. Yeah. I, th I think you're right that there are a lot of people who will argue that a journalism degree and especially a journalism master degree is not really necessary. Um, I, I, I'm not going to be the one who is able to tell you whether that's necessary for you in your case or, or not. But I would say the one thing our degree does really well is that it's so narrowly focused on journalism. You know, we only have that one year um, with you here. We try to give you enough experience um, to prepare yourself to jump into a newsroom job as, as soon as you finish. Um, and depending on where you are and what skills you already have, it may be an opportunity for you to build on those skills or to acquire some new skills that you didn't pick up during your undergraduate degree. The things that you need to do the most are to be able to write really well, regardless of what kind of medium you're planning to use. Um, 
you need to be able to find those stories and be a solid reporter. So that inquisitive mind is something that we try to develop. And in, in Logan, I, I want to ask, um, veteran or not, just in terms of your students, what, what are you asking them to leave your program with? Um, is it a, like, if you could pick one thing, is it a skill set? Is it a mindset? Is it all of the above? What's, what's something in its core to, to, your, to your master's program? One thing that I work really hard to build with the students is a sense of news judgment. So I want them to be able to think like a journalist and make those decisions because that's one of the things that is, you know, there's a lot of people who can write, you know, there's a lot of people who could make videos if we wanted them to. Um, but to be able to look at a giant pile of information and sift through it and say, all right, these are the things that are important for us to know, that's a specific skill. And so we try to cultivate that in a number of different ways from the program. No, that's perfect. Thank you, Logan. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to turn it over to, to Frank now. Frank Bowman, he's the uh, Director of Enrollment Services. Um, Frank, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, one of the things that, that I was hoping that you could kind of touch on is, you know, we, we've we talked a lot in, in other webinars and, and events about getting um, veterans into the newsroom, so to speak. Um, but, you know, what, what's it like getting veterans or, or students in general just into the classroom um, and getting them enrolled in, in the client college? Sure. Um, yeah, I'm really glad to be here and with my colleagues as well, too. And um, my experience is a little bit different. I'm not a, a faculty member at Klein, but uh, I've been in you know recruitment and admissions for about 15 years at several institutions. So um, what I've seen over the years is really the type of student has changed. And, um, but I'm, I'm glad that it was brought up of what journalists do as storytellers. And that's what the students are coming in with. They're coming in with so many stories to tell. And it's the type of student has also changed too. So we're, we are seeing veterans. We are seeing more adult students. Um, you know, the traditional student is no longer the 18 to 22. We're, we're seeing, you know, all types of students coming in, but they all have a story to tell. And I think that's what's been so fascinating in getting them into these programs like journalism is um, they're able to kind of build upon their skill set, um, you know, work on their writing skills, uh, communicate, tell the story the way they want to tell it. And they do that by getting into the classroom with some of these amazing faculty that we have here, you know, in our session today and learning from them and then going out on their own and, and talking to strangers and, you know, putting those stories together. So, that's what I've seen over the years of, you know, if you have a story to tell, um, journalism is just an amazing program to do it because you will build your skill set. You will be able to um, learn to communicate to others and, you know, ask the right questions. And as Logan said, you know, sort of, sort of sift through everything, figure out what's the most important things to, to write about, to talk about. And that's how you tell the story in your own way. And you know, again, my experience is really just working with the incoming students, you know, uh, of all ages and, and just trying to find that right space for them, the right institution, the right program. Um, but again, I've, I've talked to many students, even if they're not even considering journalism or communication fields. And what's amazing is just by taking some of those classes or maybe coming to Temple and, and joining our minor in journalism, it's enough of, a, of an experience that they can get that they can enhance those skills to, you know, better tell their stories. So again, I think it's really, you know, I know everyone has a story to tell and, you know, you can tell it in your own way. Um, but if you get into our classrooms and, and get in front of, you know, these faculty here, they're going to help you kind of tell that story in the right way, the way you want to tell it on whatever kind of platform you want to tell it on. So, um, and that's really what's changed over the years is I think, Again, you know, you're seeing students who um, are, you know, moving from all different platforms or mediums to tell what they want to tell the story about. And um, again, I think it's just like, you just got to get your voice out there, um, take some of these classes, experience it, you know, get out into the community, talk with, you know, talk with people, ask questions, um, kind of figure out what's the truth, what's the, you know, what's not truth, um, and, and put it together and then just, you know, tell the story your way. Frank, I want to ask you, um, obviously, the, the end goal for anyone who's pursuing a degree or going into the field is, is to get a job. 
or one of the end goals that to get that foot in the door, especially for, for our membership. And, you know, I, I'd like to hear, you know, your opinion on, on maybe the hiring process or things like that, but really as an enrollment and um, recruiting official specialist representative, um, you're, you're really the first step into, into that process. Um, as, as Luann mentioned and, and David mentioned, um, you know, newsrooms are looking for, for people with journalism experience and especially in the academic sense. Um, and like I said, you're the first, first step in that is getting them into the door of the act, uh, of, of, you know, the academic, uh, arena. So what, what makes a, a good applicant in your mind? What makes someone, um, you know, especially worthy of, of going to the Klein College and then they're, they're in building those skills and then getting a job? Just w- what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll first say that, you know, my job is, is gets easier uh, when I can work with somebody like Luann who, who works with the students when, they're, when they get the Temple and they get the Klein and, and they kind of build their resume and build their skill sets. Um, and then I can tell the parents or the students themselves, you know, before they get to Temple, um, this is what our other graduates have done, right? This is the, the success for them. Um, but honestly, the, the, the applicants that really do well with us, um, you know, the students who are coming in, I always like to tell them, like, you know, if you're the person who volunteers, who asks the questions, who shows up early, stays late, if you're the one that, you know, you're, you're working on your school newspaper or you have your own blog and um, you're, you're putting all your time and effort into that, that's, that's the kind of passion that we like to see at Temple because we're going to give you, you know, we're going to help you build that skill set. We're going to give you the resources, but you have to be that leader. You have to be that person who takes what you've learned, takes what you know, and runs with it. And so when I talk to a student, especially if they're already doing some of this, or you could just tell that they're passionate about being a storyteller, um, they're passionate about something they created, a blog, um, you know, you know, whatever they're contributing to, that's someone that I can say, listen, you come to Temple, you come to Klein College, you look at our programs, especially like journalism, you're going to be successful. I mean, you can tell that that person, um, just because of what they're bringing to the table already, and they haven't even stepped foot into any of our classes yet. So, you know, again, I think it's, it's, it's easy to talk about the success of our, our graduates um, because we have so much, you know, success for them. But I think, again, it's, it's what a student can bring to the table, what they can bring to that application and say, listen, this is, this is my experience. Um, this is what I love to do. I'm passionate about it. And if they can demonstrate that, um, we want them here at Temple. And, and we've kind of talked around the subject too, but, you know, a lot of, especially our members and just veterans in general that are getting out um, of the service are, are going to be in an older age bracket. I mean, mm-hmm. even if you join directly at the age of 18, um, you know, you did your four-year contract, when you get out, you're going to be 22, which is probably the average of your, um, you know, your undergraduate senior. So already, um, you're already at the end of the the line for, um, for the average age. And and for MVJ, we have members that are in their thirties, forties, older. Um, so I want to ask, what would you, you know, tell, um, veterans who are, who are getting out, who may be hesitant to go back to school, go into journalism school, um, because, you know, they're, they're coming out at a different, um, you know, learning experience or or age bracket, um, than probably what their peers are going to be at. Well, I would say that um, actually that's changing. Like I said, you know, the traditional student of 18 to 22 directly from high school, I mean, those numbers are, are falling. You know, by, by 2025, 2026, high school graduation rates are going down. We, we kind of see that coming. Um, you know, the 24 to 49 year old uh, age range, that's growing. I mean, that's close to about 40% right now with, with college students. So, they're in a great age bracket. I mean, that's, you know, they're bringing in experience and life experience. Um, I wouldn't worry about the age because again, I talk to students of all ages. I mean, our incoming class this fall, we had students as young as 15 and as old as 55. So it's, you know, we see a range of students these days. And, and again, in, in my experience in the last 15 years, that certainly has changed. Um, again, I'm talking to, to people who have families who are working full time, 
who maybe started off at college, then maybe went into the military and then, and then came back and now they're trying to finish their, their degree. Um, you're going to find everybody from all walks of life here at Temple, especially. So I would say, you know what, use, use that advantage of, of your age, your experience. Um, you're going to bring something to the classroom that, you know, some of the students who are coming directly from high school don't have. And so you can contribute to that conversation. Um, but you're going to find many peers who are in very similar uh, place in their life or, um, you know, a, again, they, you know, they didn't do what was used to be the traditional route and coming directly from high school. Um, that's changing. And I think you're going to find that schools like Temple and especially at Klein College, um, you're going to find that there are others who are just like you coming from all walks of life, all different ages. Um, and you know what? I mean, you're going to be comfortable with it. You're going to see that in the classroom. So, um, you know, I welcome that. And I've seen the change over the last few years, especially. So, um, yeah. Awesome. No, I appreciate it, Frank. And I, I want to turn it over to uh, Christy, because I feel like a lot of that last conversation, it seemed like it resonated with you. Um, Christy, thanks for, for joining. Um, can you can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, awesome. Yeah, thanks for thanks for being here. I appreciate you bringing the um, Temple veteran perspective. If you could kind of give us a little bit about your background and um, you know the the veteran community there at Temple. Absolutely. So, I am the assistant director of military and veteran services, and excitingly, I'm actually a graduate of Luke College. Back in 2017, I got my undergraduate. And I commissioned through Temple's ROTC program, and I was an active duty medical officer for the past four years. I was stationed at Fort Lewis near Washington. And within the past month, I moved back to the, to the East Coast, and I, I assumed this position. But yeah, I kind of was really resonating with a lot of what Frank said. So I also oversee Temple University's Military and Veteran Services Center. And so what the center looks like is essentially just a one-stop one shop for everything that military affiliated students, student veterans can need. And when we talk about that population at Temple, you know, there's so many student veterans here, but what we also have is so many folks who are dependents or, you know, spouses of military members that are just also seeking services from the center or who may also be participating, you know, in all of these other majors or such. Um, so really the, the primary mission of the center and, and my job is to make sure that that folks who are military connected and who are student veterans receive the best transition they can to higher education. Because like we were saying that, that looks a lot different coming from an environment of strict discipline, from having your, having your day mapped out. You have a lot of freedom to choose, choose whatever you'd like to do. And navigating the bureaucracy of the VA and receiving your, the benefits that you earned, that's something that my center can help out with. You know, we, we certify all of the GI benefits for students, uh, help navigate that. You know, that looks totally different from student to student. One folks may be using chapter 35, chapter 33, what have you. And that's really challenging to, to understand and to navigate. So that's, you know, that's one of our primary missions. And also we just wanna make sure that we're supporting success of student veterans and making sure that they do graduate, making sure that they feel supported along their, their higher education journey. You know, we want to make sure that we have events that, that student veterans and military affiliated folks can connect to, can learn from. And this is a, this is a great event. This is, I'm super happy this is happening. But yeah. No, that's awesome. Thank you, Christy. And I, um, I was also at Fort Lewis. So it's, we'll have, we'll, um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk after this. We won't bore everyone else in here about the intricacies of uh, Washington State and Joint Base Lewis-McChord, but um, no, I appreciate, I appreciate you saying that. And, you know, I, I wanted to ask a little bit, cause you touched on it, um, a little bit, but that transition and why I'll just talk about my own experiences there. There are a lot of natural, um, transitions going from military to into a, a job field. And one of the ones that I feel like isn't tapped enough is academia. You know, you, we have a lot of people that come out of the military and go to school, um, and there's some that just get right into a job and, and the latter can be pretty overwhelming if you don't have a supportive community around that. Uh, I kind of want to hear your, your thoughts about that and why, you know, is going to a school like the Klein College or just Temple in general um, a great option for veterans um, that are just coming out? No, absolutely. I'm very partial to the Klein College, like I said. 
But you know, in in I'm actually reading a book. It's called What's Next for the Student Veteran, and there there's a lot of surveys, a lot of research done done on you know when folks get out, what is their main goal? And 71% of the of the surveyed pool chose higher education, and they want they wanted to pursue higher education because they think it leads to better job prospects or what have you. And I think a lot of folks don't tap into that education resource because they don't know what benefits are available to them and what, you know, what university has to offer. Because, you know, a, a large number of folks do go into the military to receive education benefits or a large number of folks go into the military because college may not be for them. And maybe through their journey through the military, they, they learn that they can go to college. You know, so it's it's a it's a very it's very person dependent on how folks you know view college. But you know, Temple University, Klein College have fantastic opportunities for student veterans. Temple University welcomes student veterans. It is a great option to excel in your career and and you know get the education that you deserve that you that you earn through your service. Chrissy, thank you so much. I'm gonna go in reverse order for, for closing comments. Is there anything else that you uh, you have that you'd like to say to MVJ members, Temple University members, anything to close out with? No, I mean, this was, a, this was a fantastic event and it was great. Like I said, I started this past month. And so learning about MVJ was awesome for me. And if any folks ever wanna visit the center, we are, we are on Temple University, we have a fantastic center and everybody's more than welcome to, to come see. Awesome. Well, I'll point them your way. Frank, what about you? Any, any closing comments? No, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. And, and just, uh, you know, again, if um, we offer a lot of different uh, services for, you know, for students who are looking to come to Temple and Klein, different types of visits, you can meet with our amazing faculty, um, sit in on classes and things like that. So um, that's really how you'll find if, you know, if Temple is going to be the right place for you. Um, just ask those questions. We'll put you in touch with the right people. So thanks. thanks so much, Frank. Yeah, I'll send them your way too. Logan? Yeah, thanks for this program. And I would just say, uh, if you have any questions about curriculum uh, or the way the program is taught, I'm your guy. Awesome. Thank you, Logan. Luann? I would say that if you cannot imagine a job where you're sitting nine to five in some cubicle, then, and you want to tell stories and you want your life to be an adventure, come talk to us. We'll show you how to do it. Awesome. Thank you, Louie. David, closing us out. Well, uh, a couple things, and, and thank you so much for this. This has been great. Um, uh, one comment about age. Uh, the um, I would I would recommend wherever your members are interested in looking in terms of higher education, look up to see if there are people outside of the traditional college age because you don't want to be the only person over twenty five uh, and there are some schools where where that would be the case. Um, uh, you know, look up the number of veterans because again, you don't want to be the only veteran. Um, uh, in your uh, in your college or university, um, there's strength in numbers. You want other people to understand directly the experience that you had, um, but don't also don't be intimidated by the age. Uh, if you're starting, let's say you're 40 years old and you're saying, "Well, I don't want to be a, uh, I don't want to be graduating and being a 40 year old college graduate." Well or 44 year old college graduate. Well, you'll be 44, no matter what you do, you might as well, you might as well do something, um, you know, in the meantime that, that you find fulfilling and, uh, and it's never too late to start. Um, uh, the other thing I'll say, and, and this is kind of like piggybacking on what um, Logan said about, um, you know, one of the things that we offer is news judgment, which is absolutely true. We also are one of the only departments that goes against the parental advice of don't talk to strangers. We send people out, right? And you know, one thing that the military, I think, prevent, uh, uh, provides uh, as a model for anyone who's serving uh, or who has served is like not only sitting at a desk, not only um, you know doing um, work in a cubicle, but most jobs in the military involve talking to other people and getting out. 
Um, and, uh, and that's one of the things that we do really well. Um, you might want to do it in a rural area. You might want to do it in a suburban area. We offer an urban um, uh, experience where we're really trying to make sense of this crazy city, you know, that's diverse and exciting and the birthplace of our extraordinary, sometimes complex, sometimes problematic, but important democracy, um, uh, Philadelphia. Um, and so, you know, kind of getting out there and talking to people and, and introducing various parts of society to one another uh, and holding leaders accountable is a really exciting and noble mission, um, both the military and journalism uh, at its best, uh, uphold democracy and, um, and freedom of expression and, um, and our freedoms and our safety. Um, and uh, I think they're, they're there's a lot of nobility in, in both fields. Uh, and finally, I'll just say, if anyone wants to talk about journalism, about Temple, or about just anything, you know, questions about how to break in, uh, my email is really simple. Uh, it's mindich at temple.edu, and, and feel free to contact me for anything. David, thank you so much. And um, I'll send you an email after this. We'll make sure that we get everyone's contact information. Um, before we close out, I just want to plug one thing. Uh, in October the 21st to the 22nd, we have our first annual uh, Military Veterans and Journalism Convention. It's going to be a virtual gathering of uh, journalists uh, across the country and prospective journalists who are also veterans. Um, our, our key sponsor is going to be CNN. Jake Tapper has a keynote speech. And Luann, like the, the career fair that you had, we have a a whole host of um, news organizations and media persons who are going to be there to, to help support um, getting veterans in newsrooms. And I'm so happy that um, you guys are here to help add to that conversation and help us do that. Um, so unless there's anything else, I think we're going to end it here again. I want to say thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Um, I know this is going to be completely beneficial to our to our members uh it's recorded we'll put it on our youtube and yeah no thank you so much have a great day everyone thank you